guys, Mitch here from Cinema Suite. Welcome to the third director tutorial. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at actor groups inside of Cinema Director. Let's get started. So we have our director window open here, and we also have the Unity Lab scene open, which is a great sample scene from Unity. There's tons of cool assets in here, and they're really detailed, so I'm using this one for an example. We have a camera back here, which you can see is the current view. And right now when you play the scene, the camera just stays in one place while the little buddy bot flies over there and this guy's just sitting here idling. So we're going to uh, use curve tracks and actor groups to give the camera some movement. So the first thing we want to do is make a new actor track group. So we're going to do that. And now we have to target our camera. So we hit the target button, type in main camera, name of our camera, and we hit main camera. So now we have our camera targeted in our actor track group. We're going to hit the plus button to add a new track. And now we can choose actor track or curve track. And we will um, we'll show you actor tracks in a second. But first we're going to do curve tracks because that's what you use to move values around. So we have our curve track here. And again, we hit the plus and it makes a curve clip. So instead of the curve tracks uh, having curves themselves on them, they actually hold curve clips. And these curve clips contain the curves themselves. That way, you can edit the curve inside the clip, and then you can uh, retime them and move them around very easily. And uh, it just it's a lot less messy that way. That's the solution we came up with. So to add a curve to our curve clip, we hit Edit, and then right click add curve and we're going to say transform and we'll do position. So we have our curve clip and we have our camera selected and we're going to use this uh, curve clip to change the position of the camera. So we want this as a starting position, that's okay. But to, to change the ending position, we're going to right click and then snap scrubber to this last keyframe. So that way we know it's right on the keyframe. And then once we know it's on that keyframe, we're going to move our camera not all the way in there we'll move it maybe to here and now we can see the curve changes and if we play our cutscene you see the camera moves and the camera view moves too so going back to what i said about curve clips the really great thing about them is now we can retime this so that movement doesn't start until later and we can very easily do that uh, with our curve clip system in director so we see now the camera moves afterwards. So really great, really powerful. The next thing we're going to do is add some rotation to that camera. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can actually go right into the save, same curve clip and add rotation to this curve clip. Snap scrubber to the end again. And then take that camera and rotate it. And we can actually change two values on the same curve clip. So now we see if we go to game view, the camera rotates as it changes its position. But we're just going to undo that for now. Undo, undo, back to having no rotation in there. Um, say you wanted the rotation to actually happen with a different timing than the position movement. The easiest way to do that is to add another curve track. It's still going to target the same thing because it's the actor track group that chooses the target, remember? And then we just have to make a new curve clip, add curve, transform, rotation, and can do the same thing, edit, maybe we'll close this one up, go back to our scene view here, and flip that camera around, we get the same effect again, but now we could retime this if we want to so it doesn't rotate until later. Or maybe it finishes rotating earlier. So it's like something like. Oof. So curve flips are a great way to move around anything in Unity. And not just move around, actually. If you look at what these curve clips can do, you can actually change like any attribute like the field of view the clipping planes you could change the uh you know 
ramp up the fog or ramp up the bloom. Anything that, uh, any value that that target has, you can change with the curve clip. It's a really, really powerful tool. So next I'm going to go over what you can do with actor track groups. Those these curve tracks here. So we're going to make a new actor track group and we're going to make the scientist our target this time. And some of these things could apply, apply to the camera too, but I think it'll be easier to show you on the scientist guy. So we hit the plus, add an actor track, and in actor tracks, there are a whole, a whole lot of things you can do. It's kind of like the uh, library from the global tracks and the director track groups, but uh, these all relate to the specific target instead of more global things. So we have uh, under legacy animation here, we have blend animation, crossfade, play, rewind, sample, stop animation, and these show up in clips. Um, if you still use legacy animation once in a while, we have that in there. But there's also animator for mechanum animations, which is a bit more powerful. And at this point, I figure most people are probably more familiar with that system. We have play mechanum animation, look at target, set bool, set float, you know, can change. Uh, so you can change the values in your animator tree here, your animation controller. Under audio source, we have pause, play, play one shot, stop audio. Um, this differs from the audio in director groups because this is actually 3D positional audio that's emitting from the source. So if uh, you do an audio source event and you're targeting the guy, the sound will come from that guy. So it's useful for like creating a sound environment, but of course if you want like a voiceover kind of thing, then you would probably uh, want a more flat output, you would do that with a director group. Then of course we have game object, disable, enable. This one should be pretty self-explanatory at this point. Then under light, we have set light color and set intensity. That's always good. If you want to do this uh, smoothly, you could always do it with a curve, but if you want uh, the lights to snap to an intensity, then you could do it this way. So we see this is called control room down lighter spot. So we will target that in a new actor group, control room down lighter spot. We know it's one of these. So now if we say light, set intensity, maybe we set the intensity to negative. We see it turn off when it gets to that point on the timeline. And let me show you that with a curve real quick. You could go to curve, add curve clip, edit, add curve, light. Um, how about we do color instead of intensity just to change it up a little. And then let's see, let's bring down the reds. So now, uh, I don't know if you could see that it wasn't that dramatic. We'll also bring up the blues. It's kind of hard to see see there. <clears throat> okay, so we're putting the blues way up. We're bringing the reds way down. And now when you play, you see the lights fade into this crazy blue color. So there's all kinds of cool, subtle, precise things like that you can do with uh, curve clips. Yeah, we have set light color here too. Navigation set destination is for those nav mesh agents or whatever for telling your AI where to go. Under physics, we have apply force, apply torque, sleep, wake up, set mass, toggle gravity. Sleep and wake up are actually for uh, turning rigid bodies on and off if you want to do like a rag doll. Set mass for changing the mass of something. Toggle gravity, pretty self-explanatory. Apply force and apply torque are also pretty self-explanatory. And that's about it for actor track groups, but we also have one other thing that we're covering in this tutorial, multi-actor track groups. And these are fairly similar to actor groups. You can uh, still add actor tracks and curve tracks. Difference being, if you come over here into the inspector, you can actually target multiple actors, kind of like that mass disabler we were looking at in the last tutorial. So if we say 10, gives us uh, 10 pickers and Say we want to kill all the lights at once. We'll just select all the uh, all the lights in here. And then we come into the curve track and we'll go edit. Maybe we'll rename this to uh, kill lights. 
And then once we have all the things targeted in here, actually, we, um, we pick what we want. Over here, we pick what we want each target to be. So we'll say light, 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 light. And then we have to tell it what uh, kind of variable we're going to be editing. And uh, we know that intensity is a float, I'm pretty sure. Right, so we hit float and it gives us all the floats that uh, light could possibly have. And we're going to change the intensity for all of them. And let's see, now we can edit our curve and we will go from snap scrubber. So we'll set this keyframe to one and we will set this keyframe to zero. And now when you play our cutscene, you will see the lights will fade out. Anyway, guys, that's about it for actor groups and multi-actor groups in Cinema Director. I'm Mitch from Cinema Suite. Thanks for watching. Thank you.